hey, good morning. Viewer Jeff sent in this project. Yep. Before you click away, before you go, oh, we're really, we're gonna do a, a box, basically a little flat box, simple, easy, boring. You might be surprised to know that I think that this is arguably the hardest project that's come into the shop to date. And I'll tell you why. Remember last week we finished up this project, which was sent in by Dana, her little pony, and we molded it in cast. It was a four, four week series. If you haven't seen it, uh, check out the link above. Pretty nice, a perfect reproduction of her pony, right? Well, is it? Is it really a perfect reproduction of her pony? How could you tell? The great thing about creatures, the great thing about but you know, people, animals, anything biological, anything with curves and you know, that kind of form is they can be pretty warped and they can be pretty distorted and they can be pretty funky. And you can't tell, it's fine, it's perfectly okay. But, and the reason that, that those things are introduced and the reason that those things happen is we're working with silicone rubber and silicone rubber squishes and silicone rubber stretches. And when you put pressure on it with rubber bands, it deforms. It may only deform a little tiny bit, but it deforms. And all of those things are a problem because if you look at Jeff's project, every edge is dead perfect square. The corners are square, the edges are straight, and they're thin. And the walls of the project are thin. There's nothing easy about casting something like this in silicone rubber. This is really, really a challenge. Like, where am I gonna put the parting line? There's, it, the parting line wants to be right here on this edge, perfectly on this edge. So you know what that means? That means that me, the king of the cut mold, can't really use a cut mold on this project. This is a project that wants to have a perfectly flat, even parting line right on an edge. And that means we're not gonna use a cut mold, we're gonna use a two-piece mold. This is where the kind of flexibility and the kind of breadth of knowledge of various techniques that you can employ come into play because in your shop, in your studio, in your art practice, whatever it is you're doing, you're going to have objects that are gonna require using a variety of techniques. You just are and you uh, have to recognize when the thing you most love to do just simply isn't gonna work. And here's another thing that's worth considering. This rubber is very soft. I think it's short 25 on the A scale. I'll check that, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's a soft, squishy, malleable rubber. The big advantage is it deforms a lot and you can release all kinds of crazy detail and all kinds of crazy shapes out of it because it, it's so easy to pop off. This project is calling out for a much more rigid tool, a much more rigid rubber. And uh, I should go out and buy a, a much more, a much harder rubber. Uh, and if I was Jeff and I was planning on making a lot of these or a lot of my work consisted of this kind of shape, I would definitely move to a harder shore rubber because that way it's much harder to, to warp and bend uh, and it's gonna hold its shape much firmer. It's also gonna be much harder to get off the model. There's trade-offs in everything. Remember how I always say, as soon as you affect one thing, you affect 10 other things in a negative way. So you're constantly balancing and trading. And if I do this, it's gonna affect things down the line, all that good stuff. Well, this is a great example of that. I wanna cast it in the rubber I normally use, partially because I don't wanna go out and buy a bucket of hard rubber for one project uh, that would make the cost of this project quite prohibitive. Um, but also I think because we can succeed with this rubber, we just have to respect the fact that we want to make, we want to design a mold that is hard to warp under pressure and will retain its shape and will close cleanly and will do all the things we need to do to reproduce this thing perfecto. Okay, we're gonna pour some registration buttons or pins or whatever you wanna call them. Let me go off and mix some resin. All right, I'm back. I mixed up a 30 gram batch of some resin that was left over from the last project. And let's see if we can successfully pour this stuff. Quick, quick, quick. I don't want them to be a mess like that if I can avoid it just because the, the neater I pour them, damn. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. One of the tricks that you can use when you have a smaller amount of resin in the cup you have a lot more control over the pour. 
as you can see, it's working better. I think I have plenty now, but while the liquid resin's still liquidy, I'll keep pouring. Nice. That worked out really well, and that's given me every one that I need. I do have plenty of leftover res, so just for fun, whenever I have leftover res, I pour it into a waste mold so I make an extra part that I can use, and off we go to the tank. Those buttons must be cooked by now. Let's go take them out of the tank. All right, let's see how we did. Well, let's see. Oh, that took a lot, didn't it? Okay, let me just pull this one apart. That was just an extra. See, that's how I make my sprues and funnels. I just pour in, I just have these funnel molds and I just pour in extra resin. I got a huge collection of those. Don't need any more till I live 17 lifetimes. So, you know, this is just blue machinist wax. And I made this piece on a uh, CNC router with just a basic little roundover bit. See that little bit? Just a basic little roundover bit. Works like a champ. Makes these buttons. See if I could pull this off. Oh yeah. Oh, they just pop right out. Neat as can be. Here we go. So let's pop these out. I put a good amount of release agent on there. So I knew that I could pop them. And I'll be cleaning that release agent out. I'm gonna, you're gonna see me use release agent later on because when we go to pour this thing, I'll be sure to use release agent because I want it to come apart. Super easy. I calculated I only need something like 12 or 14 of these buttons. And I didn't count them when I poured them quick. Somebody count them up for me. Tell me how many I got in the comments down below. Save me from having to do the math. See how easy they pop out? They're not 100% cured. They're still kind of leathery soft, but I'm doing that because I want them to pop right out. Extra easy. Piece of cake. Got those done. Those are gonna be our registration buttons for the mold halves. And then instead of using a cut mold where we make a big jaggedy edge to make the thing register, those buttons are gonna provide the registration on our uh, landing, on our edge. You'll see coming up, but the next thing we're gonna do is build a box. So let's go do that. All right, I believe we have got it. And you may ask, why don't I get myself one of those fancy glue applicators with the, with the squeeze bottle and all that other stuff? You've seen those around, you can see those in all the fancy places. And the answer is, I don't know, <clears throat> never bothered. I just have always used a stick in the, the old stick in the jug business. Also, let's be honest, this is not fine cabinetry. So it doesn't matter if I kind of snared glue on the surfaces of the wood. You know what? Truth is, it doesn't even have to be square perfectly, but what it has to do is the top half and the bottom half have to match. I would like it to be more or less square, but since I cut these with the same setup at the same time, they should come out to be pretty close to square. That's pretty good, and that's reasonably square. Let's go over here, same drill. That corner feels square. The reason that it doesn't have to be perfectly square is that the bottom of the box and the top of the box have to match. But if they're just, you know, a hair out of square, who cares? It's a mold. It's not furniture. Okay, I've wasted enough camera time on this dog for sure. All right, box is glued up. We're just gonna let it dry and then we're gonna go on to the next step. All right, let's set some kind of new world speed record at uh, waxing wood. Time to set a new world speed record for waxing wood. Let's do it. And get out the old heat gun. And away we go. Now, if you watch my channel, you've seen me do this before. And the reason that we wax the wood, the reason we wax everything, is because neither the rubber nor the resin will stick to it. It's beautiful stuff, beeswax. I love it. I love my beeswax. The waxing's all done. Let's put on some dots. 
It's time to assemble this box into a finished mold case. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this handy dandy piece of white styrene. So we're gonna have walls on the box like that. And this boy's gonna live in the middle. I'm gonna tack these down, these little dots down, neatly and meticulously assembled with all these dots all the way around it. Everything nice in position. I'm just using my waxer and uh, my wax pen and sticky wax to stick these to the bottom. You can see that I've already put a dollop of wax in the bottom of each one of these. And I also just put it on my finger. I'm just burning that crap out of myself. Okay, let's get busy. I'll do all that and I'll come back to you when I've got it all done. Here's how I arranged the dots around the body of the part. And uh, you'll notice that they are irregularly arranged and that's so that the mold tabs can only go together in one way. Backed up by plywood, I have a sheet of thin styrene plastic. And uh, there's a very good reason for that plastic to be here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this thing. Let's move things out of the way so it doesn't get hit. I'm gonna hit this thing with a little bit of parting agent. Doesn't need a lot. I'm just gonna put this molecular amount of parting agent. Let's see, am I even getting this? Here we go. Just the lightest amount. That's enough. Plenty of parting agent. Now, when I put the part into the box, I'm not going to put parting agent on the model. And the reason I'm not putting parting agent on the model is I want the rubber that I'm gonna pour around this now to stick to this model more than it sticks to the parting line because that styrene sheet and those red dots are what's gonna create the parting line for the second half of the mold. We are finally, at long last, ready to start pouring some rubber. And there's some tricks in that, and I'll show you those in a minute. You always have to modify your procedure for every mold, for every situation. The whole point to this white sheet of styrene and to those little red dots is to create a parting line. So let's pour some rubber. First of all, I almost forgot. I'm gonna put a post-it note down inside the model as a condom, and that's because I'm gonna use a spray can, just a full, unopened, can of primer, and that's my weight. I don't. I didn't glue this model down to this base. I don't want it to glue down. Here, the problem with this kind of mold is, I'm gonna have to take apart the parting line to pour the other side. So I've gotta be able to take that sheet of styrene off and all those little red dots out of there without pulling the, rub, the rubber that I'm pouring now away from the model. I want it to stick. So I put parting agent all over the parting line parts, but I did not do that with the model, and I won't. And the only thing I'm gonna do here, now one of the things you notice me doing immediately, you're going, wow, you, but you aren't you doing, kind of breaking the rules here? Aren't you enrobing those dots? And the answer is, yes, I am, and I'm doing it intentionally, because I wanna trap air underneath them, because I don't want the rubber leaking down underneath those dots. Well, that's the theory anyway, we'll see if it works. So you're always battling air. I'm always trying to think, well, what's the air doing to me? The other thing I'm gonna do here that you will notice is I'm not gonna fill this mold right now. And the reason for that is I don't want there to be a lot of pressure of rubber pushing so that it can move that model around and or so that it can push the rubber underneath the model. I'm pouring from all sides so that I have rubber all the way around the model but I want a very small amount of rubber right now. I don't want to do more than just seal the edge of the model and cover those dots. And then we're gonna let this gel. We, won't not, we don't have to fully let it cure, but we want it to gel. There's very, very little weight pushing that rubber. Uh, the, whatever bubbles are in there, I de-aired de de the rubber, and these, you just see there are just so few bubbles, whatever it are, that's a thin sheet of rubber, it's gonna pop right out. We're going to let that gel, and then we're going to uh, pour the box full. We'll do that next. The gasket I poured earlier to seal up the buttons and seal up the model, seal up the edge, that's uh, gelled, it's not cured, it's been only been a few hours, but it's nice and gelled, and so it's ready to go. We can take this, weight off of the model, it's no longer needed. And I mixed up a batch of rubber. So let's go ahead and start pouring. Now I wanna pour away from the model because I want the rubber to rise up into those ridges on the side of the model. 
I'm going to pour away from the model and let the rubber flow towards it all the way around. Very nice. Now I am allowing the rubber to rise from the bottom up and I'm being careful not to drape the model because there's all those uh, little uh, details with stripes, uh, grooves on the side of the model and I want to make sure the rubber rises through those which it looks like it's doing just perfect. There you go. Now, now that the thing is filled, I'm going to swap in here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to allow the rubber to flow out to the edges. So I want to make sure I don't trap any rubber in those grooves. I really want to make sure I fill those corners. Let the rubber just flow out. See, I'm making sure that that rubber has a chance to push, just flow into the corners and not catch any bubbles in that corner. I don't want it to catch bubble in that corner. Want to just flow in naturally into the corner. It's going to require one more filling because we're going to top it. We're going to put the, the last part. It's going to be a nice thick piece of rubber. Notice that the rubber is flowing into those corners. So we're going to catch nice sharp corners. Looking super good. Let's go mix another pot of rubber and we'll top this boy off. I'm purely eyeballing, so this is a guess as to whether or not I'm going to have enough, ru enough rubber to fill this thing. Let's see. Here we go. And again, I'm just going to pour from the middle so that it fills up that well because I want to catch those corners. Once it overflows the, 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 the well, we're done. And then we're going to just fill the model. Now we can just fill it around the edges so that we make sure we catch that top edge, which we have done. You can see that that top edge is going to get caught beautifully. And how much rubber we're going to need, I don't know. It's a pretty big box. So it's clear to me that I'm going to need one more topping layer. Again, look at all the bubbles. Most of those bubbles that you see there, they were caused by me scraping the bucket. They'll pop right out. They are not a concern of, to me at all. So just a little bit more rubber and this, this half of this mold. This is one reason why I don't love two-part molds. I'm only half done. <laughs> If, I was, if this was a cut mold, I'd be done. I would have poured the whole mold. So uh, I think I'll just go ahead and top this off and um, we'll get on. And the next time you see it, we're going we're gonna to take the mold apart, flip it over, and pour the other side. It's 2.30 in the morning on Thursday. <laughs> we're coming down to the wire here, kids, on this thing, and we don't know if this is going to work. You might recall. At the beginning of this video, I said this was a tricky mold. And so far, you're looking at it going, uh, you built a box and you poured some rubber around it. What's tricky about that? But the truth is that all the trickery and lies and deceit and deception necessary to make this mold work are coming now. So, um, yeah, no, we're not done. And <laughs> we are nowhere near done with this mold. Let's get going and see if this mold will come apart. You have no idea. Take off the clamps, and you'll notice that I did not seal this with wax, so this can just come right off. That's a very important part to this now. Now for the fun. What we have to hope is that this will pop right off, and it did. And it took most of the dots with it. Let's see if we can help coax the two remaining dots out of there. This one came out very nicely, and this one came out very nicely. All right, I am pleased with this. A little bit of leak under right here. Can you see that, how this leaked under? Now we're gonna have to deal with this because we can't be having that. So there's a little bit of trim work to do, a little bit of fussing to do, and I'm gonna go through and, and just basically remove all of that stuff. What, but we have achieved what we set out to achieve, and that is we made a perfect parting line. It's right on the edge. There was, there's some bleed under, as you can see. All that will have to be cleaned up. I'm, pre I'm really pleased. So far, so good. And you'll see I didn't put any dots here, and that's because I'm almost certainly going to cut the mold. You'll see me do all this stuff. Probably cut the mold right about here and right about here. And the only reason for that is to get this thing to go into the tank. So let me clean up all of this flash. And when that's done, we'll be ready to build the sprue and we will get on with it. I'm really pleased 
everything is going exactly to plan. This is a peel test. This is a separation test. I poured this little dot of rubber against this rubber with, this, with the parting agent in between. And if it doesn't peel off clean, we're going to have to start over. But look at that. Look at that. Perfect. No sticking. So I'm using a parting agent. Uh, and that parting agent prevented this rubber from sticking to that rubber. One of the complexities of this job was that I knew that it would require a custom sprue and funnel combo thing. And so I took a lump of wax, basic, your basic sculptor wax lump, and hacked this thing out of it. This is my sprue. What I'm looking for here is a nice big pour funnel, and I want it to have two entrances because uh, of the shape of the part. So let's, let's do this. So let's just get this unbelievable mess I made. I didn't, uh, by the way, I didn't sculpt this on camera because this is a, this is a mold making channel. It's not really a sculpting channel. And this probably took me 45 minutes to do. So never mind all that. Let's clean this up. This is why I put paper down so I can clean reasonably quickly this gonna sit like this get it in the right position this then sits like this I got this all neatly cleaned up so that's pretty close to ready to go now what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to hose this down just the rubber I don't need to hit the part and I don't need to hit the case with release agent, but I really need to make sure that this is, the rubber is well hit with release agent or I will have problems. And then a vent out of blue wax, out of this stuff, a vent is gonna rise right out of there, right out of that corner. And then this part, I'm gonna weld this on right like that. And that is how I'm going to vent and sprue. And you're saying, what the heck is that all about? But I want to remind you of how this mold has to sit when I pour it. It's not going to pour flat like this. I got to take these out. I'll show you more. It's going to pour like this. See that? It's going to pour in this position. So this sprue is going to be, when, it's, when I'm pouring, it's going to be like that. Can you see how that's going to work? Oh my God, it's so, it's so brilliant. Look at this, look how that's going to sit in there. That's going to sit like that. And that is how that's going to work. Just like that. And then, so now you can see if it's sitting like this, how, how I'm going to be able to pour that through that funnel. It's brilliant. Okay. We've arrived at the most critical thing in the entire project. <laughs> if this step fails, the whole mold fails, basically. Then I would have a cut mold, and then I'd have all kinds of interesting and difficult problems. So let's hope it doesn't. What I'm going to do is put the release agent, the parting agent, on this rubber. Now what you see, what I have done is I have masked off the part with a little bit of, I was going to use masking tape and paper, but then I was just used my post-it notes. So it was just so handy. So let's spray this and I need to spray it from all angles. Okay. Sprayed it from that angle, sprayed it from this. I'm trying to make sure that I get down inside of those dots. If I don't get inside the dots. I'm screwed because they would stick together. And last but not least, this side. Okay, now, that should be well and truly hosed. So what we can do, the reason, by the way, that I put this mask onto the part was, the part doesn't require parting agent on it. The rubber's not gonna stick to the part, and I don't care about uh, the wood either. What I care about is being able to attach the sprues. And if I put parting agent on there, I might not be able to attach the sprue in the vent. Let's make sure I get this on right. Well, this goes like that. Let's get out our clamps. It sits like this in the mold. Pick it up, get rid of our mask because it's covered with ease release. 
And let's go ahead and put that in there. Now, we can begin to contemplate attaching this vent to this corner. All I'm going to do is put a little tiny dowel, bit of sticky wax on the end of that and attach it right to the corner like that. Now I want it to be attached better than that. So I am going to make a little wax attachment. Nice. Just that little attachment. Don't like that I put a little spillage of wax on there. Let's get those off of there. Put, pick them right up. Come on. Come on out of there. There we go. Okay. Okay, so that should stick up like that just fine. I'm putting the sticky wax onto the bottom of the sprue all the way out to the edges. And let's go ahead and set that in place and see if it will stay put. Right where it wants to be. It wants to live right about there. So before I weld it onto there, what I'm going to do is weld it onto the case and attach it to the case on both sides. So basically I'm going to go through and weld this sprue into place. This, of course, will make attachment points that have to be cleaned up later. There's always some cleanup. There's no such thing as a casting that you don't have to do some post-finishing on. It just doesn't, well, maybe there is, but I've never seen one. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around and take my time and very meticulously weld this sprue onto that. And then, you know what time it is? It's time to pour the last layer of rubber. <laughs> Mixed up a batch of rubber, let's pour it. Just want to pour it in, let it flow out to the corners. Let it flow on out. Okay, now I want to pour it so that it flows between and around that sprue. And there it comes, good. That's what I want to see. I want to see it wrap around the legs of that. It looks like it's doing. I know it's really hard for you guys to see it. I know that because it's really hard for me to see what's going on. But I think it's wrapping pretty well. I'm trying to push that rubber through there. Okay, yeah, I did it. Okay, beautiful. So I don't have to worry about that. There's still plenty of rubber in the pot, so let's make sure we give this a good stirring. It's a big box, let me tell you. It's a good size mold. Now there's a reason why this mold is a good size mold. I want this mold to be chunkier and thicker and bigger than it would be, than you would think it would need to be. It's very rare when I do that. Generally speaking, I want the rubber to be as small as possible to save money. In this case, we might save money, but then we may get warpy, funky castings. All right, I'm gonna put another layer on. I'm gonna top this off. This is the big moment. Let's do our thing and take this case apart. Ooh, all right. Is this gonna come apart? All right, is this gonna work? Oh, looks like it might come out. Interesting. Oh yeah, looks like it's gonna come apart. No worries, it did come apart. Okay, did not have to take the case apart. Very slight leakage, no big deal. Let's go ahead and just break this sprue off, break it free. Of course, this is an interesting part of it, is we're going to have to cut this channel. So this is a combination. <laughs> it's like a two-parter. Oh yeah, that's looking good down there. Okay, so that's just going to break off. And how it comes? Let's see if it comes clean. It's separating from the rubber really nicely. It's coming right out. Oh yes. Look at that. Little flash. No big deal. That's clean. That is so clean. Yeah, we'll just take some scissors and we'll be able to pull that flash off. Not a problem. There's some flashing under here. I fully expected that. Also not a problem. We're gonna trim all this up. 
get all that wax out of there. You can see a little chip piece of wax. We'll be cleaning all the mold. No worries, no worries at all. Now, can we back this out without taking this case apart? Yes, we can. And this, boys and girls, is why I love beeswax. Look at that come out of there. That is rubber separating from wood and separating so incredibly easily because of that wax. And now, really, there should be no difficulty in peeling this mold out. No difficulty at all. Let's see. Dun, da, da, da. Da, 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 da. How are we doing? I don't want to break the model. Here it comes. I don't want to break the model. I just want to bring it out. Just perfect. Just want to bring it out perfect. There it comes. Absolutely zero damage to the model. Little tiny bit of wax cleanup. Model is perfect. And how is our mold? This mold is absolutely flawless. It is flawless. It came out perfectly. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this is, I tell you, this one's been a journey, man. This one's been an odyssey. This has not been easy. Oh, I'm so eager to see how this thing, this thing casts, how it performs. How fun is this? Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. And uh, keep your comments, keep your questions, keep your projects coming. This is viewer project number four, and we have a whole bunch of them in the pipeline right now. Uh, some really incredible projects coming up and so much fun to be had. Hey, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.